first time ever the Chicago Blackhawks have had the first pick, and we proudly select Patrick Kane. Not happy with this. Chicago, the other way, score! The skates of Kane, he got it again. Chris Scott! We've got breaking news out of the NHL where Patrick Kane is headed to the Big Apple. That is per multiple reports. Story's not over for Kane, who likely has a few more seasons and potential cup runs in him. Kane with room. He shoots, he scores! Patrick Kane takes it in, backhand, then deflects in! Kane winds up and why not? Shot the score! Patrick Kane! Excited for the experience, the opportunity, the chance to play with, you know, different organization, different players, and, uh, um, yeah, just excited about it all. The Detroit Red Wings are the winners of the Patrick Kane sweepstakes. Patrick Kane moving up, he shoots, and scores! So that, here comes Larkin. And the oh. post, rebound, oh. scores! Bingo. Patrick Kane gets the speed going. Back pass, Kane, he scores! It's Patrick Kane! This is Patrick Kane, arguably the greatest American-born hockey player to ever touch a sheet of ice. Drafted as the first overall pick back in 2008, Kane is widely recognized for his talented stick handling abilities, pinpoint shot accuracy, and clutch nature in some of the biggest moments of his career. But what happened to Patrick Kane over the past few seasons? And why did the hockey world consider him to be on the decline? Was it age? Was it health? or pure disdain towards the success of this player. Today, let's uncover the story of Patrick Kane's career and how he proved the entire hockey world wrong in just one season. Now, just a brief bit of hockey history for you guys, just to kind of tee you up for this video. Did you know that the Chicago Blackhawks had never taken a pick with the first overall selection throughout their entire franchise's history until they drafted Patrick Kane? Of course, Kane is now joined by Connor Bedard since they drafted him in the 2023 draft with the first overall selection, but this actually segues us into the next part of this video. So let's take you back to the year 2007. Patrick Kane is selected by the Chicago Blackhawks with the first overall pick taken from the London Knights of the Ontario Hockey League. Before drafting Patrick Kane, the Chicago Blackhawks were struggling with their postseason efforts, making the playoffs only twice in 10 years and never managing to win a series in that stretch. For GM Dale Talon, Kane was seen as a talent who could change the course of this Blackhawks team, and many other teams throughout the league like the St. Louis Blues were even offering multiple first round picks just to get that number one selection and take Patrick Kane, knowing the impact that he could have on their franchise. The Blackhawks ultimately decided to hang on to their pick and draft Kane with that first overall selection, not knowing that he would become one of the greatest players to ever wear a Hawk sweater. In his first year with the Chicago Blackhawks, Patrick Kane would win the Calder Rookie of the Year award, scoring 72 points in 82 games played. Joined by Jonathan Taze, the two took the NHL by storm, and in their second season, they brought Chicago back to the Stanley Cup playoffs, but ultimately they would lose in the conference finals. During that stretch though, Kane tallied 9 goals and 14 points in 16 playoff games, adding his first career hat trick along with it. Kane's game was clearly unique, and it didn't seem to cower when the lights grew brighter. The combination of Kane and Taze demonstrated instant chemistry, and the Blackhawks organization realized they had found something special. Patrick Kane's third year in the league was truly his breakout season. He scored 88 points, leading the Chicago Blackhawks to a first place finish in the Central Division. While his regular season numbers were extraordinary, Patrick Kane truly shined through even more in his playoff run. 28 points in 22 playoff games, ultimately scoring the cup winning goal in OT of Game 6 during the Stanley Cup Finals against the Philadelphia Flyers. The following five seasons, Patrick Kane and the Chicago Blackhawks would win two more Stanley Cup 
Cups, with Kane winning the Hart Trophy in the 2015-16 campaign, as well as the Conn Smythe Trophy during that time. The once underwhelming organization of Chicago had turned into a dynasty overnight, all thanks to this one superior talent. But eventually, all good things must come to an end. And for the Chicago Blackhawks, this change came rather fast after their successful run. Following their 2015 championship, this is where the Chicago Blackhawks slowly started to decline from their early on success with Kane and Taze. Players began to age, injuries started to accrue, and players that were once on team-friendly contracts departed the organization because the cap ultimately started creeping up on the team. Despite losing crucial players from their cup runs like Brad Richards, Brandon Saad, and others, the Hawks continued finding hidden gems like Artemi Panarin, Alex Dabrinkit, Tavo Teravainen, and Kirby Doc. These were players that were all set to become the next generation of Black Hawk players, while Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze began shifting to more veteran leader roles. Strangely enough though, management didn't like the makeup of some of the young players who were allegedly going to take over for the Chicago Blackhawks. Believing they would not be able to afford Artemi Panarin on his next contract due to his early success, they traded him for Brandon Saad, who had a longer term on his contract but was definitely less of a complete player. Tara Vina was traded for similar reasons, and years later they moved on from Kirby Doc because they wanted to change up some of the core like I mentioned earlier. And lastly, one of Kane's favorite players on the roster, Alex Dabrinkit, was traded because there was uncertainty about him resigning, and the Blackhawks wanted to make sure they got something in return in case he decided to walk in free agency. All of these trades and moves basically insinuated that the Chicago Blackhawks were ready to rebuild. But the only problem was they still had two franchise players in Kane and Taze making $10.5 million on their contracts and still producing at a high level wanting to compete for championships, making it all seem odd for the team to trade away some other franchise guys who really could have helped this team compete for a playoff spot. Eventually everything changed and now we see the Chicago Blackhawks team left with none of the players that we just talked about over the past couple of minutes. During those down years, while the Chicago Blackhawks were looking to rebuild, Patrick Kane wasn't ready to slow down at all. Kane was still incredibly productive while playing with the Hawks, averaging around 80 points a season and even reaching 110 points in 2019-2020. With 44 goals on that year, it was one of his more productive seasons of his career. It wasn't until 2022-23 where fans began discussing the regression of Patrick Kane and the potential of him actually leaving the Chicago Blackhawks organization. You see, the reason fans started to worry about Kane was because he was dealing with a hip injury that was seen as pretty serious. The surgery for this injury would be difficult to come back from, and for a few players who underwent the process, they never really found the same success once they hit the ice again. This surgery is called hip resurfacing, an alternative to full hip replacement that involves shaving damaged bone and cartilage from the femur, capping that bone with metal, and popping it back into a lined socket. This surgery has been performed on some high-profile test cases in tennis and pro wrestling, but the few who have had it in hockey didn't really see too much success. Now, before undergoing the surgery, Patrick Kane wanted to finish out the year, but the problem was it just felt like his career with the Chicago Blackhawks had come to an end. Eventually, after a ton of rumors and speculation, he was eventually dealt at the trade deadline to the New York Rangers. His time in New York received mixed reviews. He scored 12 points in 19 games in the regular season, and in the postseason, he tallied 6 points in 7 games, ultimately losing with the team in the first round. And while the New York Rangers definitely didn't live up to expectations, most people started to blame Patrick Kane for their lack of success, even though a lot of people understood he had that hip injury that he was dealing with and eventually would need surgery. This led a lot of people to believe that Patrick Kane had completely regressed from his time in Chicago and was now one of those veterans on the decline. The following offseason, Patrick Kane had a pretty big decision to make. He was a UFA for what felt like the first time in his career, and while he could continue playing through that hip injury, it wouldn't allow him to play to his full capabilities. Knowing this, he decided to undergo the hip resurfacing surgery, looking to come back about halfway through the 2023-24 season. But at this point, he was still looking for a new contract, so this definitely made it a little bit more difficult for him to figure out what his next move was going to be. People were down on Patrick Kane, and recency bias truly took over every conversation when you talked about his game, claiming he was washed and would never be the same player again after this surgery. Organizations seemed to have felt the same way. Some teams showed interest in bringing him on board, but it seemed like they wanted to wait to see how the surgery played out so they could then reanalyze his game and see how quickly he could recover. While there was a big market for Patrick Kane, eventually a lot of the rumors started to settle down. The Rangers were ruled out for bringing him back, and one team stood out amongst all the rest shortly after he would sign with the Detroit Red Wings. 
Playing in 50 games throughout the 2023-24 season, Patrick Kane looked to be back in vintage form. And while the surgery did have its concerns, it seemed to have worked out perfectly for the star winger. Impacting the team's success that year, he immediately became one of the biggest storylines for the Detroit Red Wings. He scored 47 points in 50 games and nearly brought the team back into the playoffs until just barely falling short in the final games of the season. This offseason, Patrick Kane decided he wanted to return to the Detroit Red Wings, signing a one-year $4 million deal. And while some people still believe that his game is going to regress, I'm on the complete opposite side of things. I think that Patrick Kane is still capable of being a point per game player. And with the success of this surgery, I'm expecting him to not only have a bigger year this year, but to bounce back and continue proving every single person who doubted him wrong. This will be year 18 for Patrick Kane at 35 years old. I'm still expecting him to be a point per game player. And arguably, I feel like he's still a top 10 right winger in today's game but this is how patrick kane proved the entire hockey world wrong overcoming adversity rumors and speculation about his game undergoing a crazy surgery and bouncing back from it all but let me know what you guys think were you on the side that felt like patrick kane's game had regressed or were you on the side that felt like he was still a top player in today's game thank you guys for watching the videos as always make sure you like this one and subscribe to the channel for more content like this i will see you guys in the next one